so uh, the journey begins. Now, again, if you missed the intro, this will be, I think, the second zoophilia podcast that we've had to talk about. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying to mass report this channel for animal animal abuse or anything like that, but... Hello. It's certainly an option that's available to people now, isn't it? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this. Note the twelve dislikes to ten likes. That is an uncomfortably good ratio. That is uncomfortably even. I do not like that. Let's get this party started. And welcome everyone to the very first episode of Bestia Amore. Uh, and just to um, sort of get something out of the way quickly. Why do they have the trans flag? Well, those are those colors, right? That's what that is. Is, is that just a uh, is that just a coincidence? I don't think that's just. Hmm. Hmm. Before we go that's any further, this isn't scripted. We have a set of show notes that we're going by, but it's not really something that we've sat down and written scripts for or. We're just kind of we didn't sit here and write scripts about how much we like dog fucking. We were too busy fucking our dogs, obviously. Kind of doing this to try to be ourselves. Anyway, it's Wednesday, September second, two thousand twenty, and I am here with my co-hosts Ellie Lioness, hey, <laughs> and Ozzy Bobcat. Hello. All right, so. Before we go too much further... This is so incredibly awkward. These two co-hosts have said, like, one word. It's just... Welcome! So, and everybody's got really terrible mic quality, it's... Um, there is a person I need to thank, and that is at that fox Callan on Twitter for our logo. Someone someone says a woman, because I think the second one was named Ellie or something. Uh, someone else in chat says Schmorky. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, he was the one that done the artwork and everything on what you see on our Twitter profile. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Um, so, I think we can go ahead and get on with some things now. So, introductions. Ellie, would you like to boys, tell us a little about yourself? Boys, uh, listen, if you are going to report this channel, try to make sure you don't do it while the stream is happening. That would be great. That's really going to fuck me over. If <laughs> We already had a situation yesterday where some fucking brain trust decided to, uh, to, to report the thing I was literally right the next day going to do a stream about. So, uh, within 12 hours, that I had a video I was going to look at taken down. We don't need it to happen live on stream. That would be fine. But if you do want to report them after the stream, I mean, who am I to tell you what you can and can't do? It is a free society, and we do, in fact, live in a society. So. Oh, um, I have a bit of a cold at the moment. Um, no, 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 uh, no COVID here. Um, I'm oh, sorry, I really fucked everything up. <laughs> sorry. Um, I've been a zoo exploitive for over about 20 years. Um, I have, I did try with people. A zoo exclusive. Uh, yeah, this is the, 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 this is discerning individual. Cool. Um, they have their well, preference human people. made right there. And I um, was very unhappy. Um, uh, Something fell off my. I have a lot of um, interests right now. My favorite video game. It my audio is really quiet. Is that indeed so? Well, is it really quieter than usual? Do I not sound the way I normally do? Because no, no settings have changed, and that would be just so wonderful on top of the already uh, fucked up intro to the stream. Um, Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll. I'm sure I'll figure it out. It's Octopod Traveler, and I love mashed potato. <laughs> All right, sounds good, Ellie. Uh, Ozzy. All right, sounds good, Ellie. Uh, <laughs> it's just the most awkward, the most awkward interaction. Would you like to step in and do your introduction? Sure. Hello. 
I'm Ozzy Bobcat, also known as the King of Bobcats, and I have been zoo for not that long, about two months. I, um, I've been my whole life, but I've only just recently started noticing and started to accept myself, thanks to everyone that I've met, everyone that's been nice to me. I'm glad there's such a strong support group of people that are that have encouraged you to commit animal abuse. That's great. And I I make myself known. I'm a little bit outgoing, not that smart sometimes, naturally, but that's just about who I am. So back to you. <clears throat> All right. And as for myself, some of you may know who this is. Some of you may not. I am Wintergreen Wolf. Uh, the very same that's been on Twitter for on and off for roughly a year. I decided to do this project with my friends here because, well, that seemed like an interesting idea. As far as about me, I am 32 years old, and I've been a zoosexual since about the age of 13, I believe, was when I had first uh, had my first Your family dog must have loved you, brother. Um, I realized my sort of deeper attractions around the age of 12, and I've never been attracted to humans at all. As far as hobbies and interests of mine go, I'm very big into tech, um, love nature in the outdoors. Of course you are. Uh, I do play video I've games. never seen a fucking zoophile who's not some level of fucking nerd. I am a nerd. I have a Carrie Kelly Robin action figure sitting on my desk right now. And a Godzilla, as you can see. However, I have never seen some jacked, supreme merch-wearing bodybuilder who is a zoophile. So clearly something is going on within the video game world. I don't know. Somebody watched one too many anime and it came to this. Games, but not as much now that I once again have a partner and companion in my life. Uh, a wonderful German shepherd. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> As far as other things go, I'm big into nature and the outdoors. I love sort of oh, the yeah. rural, more relaxed. Speaking of speaking of things, feet. Feet. Yeah, feet. That's all. Lifestyle. I'm not a very big city person. But, all in all, I'm not too bad once you get to know me. Some people will disagree, but we'll see how Did this... Did he say he has a dog? What was that? The rural, more relaxed lifestyle. I'm not a very big city person. But, uh, I do play video games, but not as much now that I once again have a partner and companion in my life. Uh, a wonderful German shepherd. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as far as other things go, I'm big into nature and the outdoors. I love sort of the rural, more relaxed lifestyle. I'm not a very big city person. But all in all, I'm not too bad once you get to know me. I don't know, dude. There are a lot of strays in the city. You probably have a plenty of, you have a wide pond to choose from. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of fish out there. Perhaps literally. Some Depends people on your interest. disagree, but we'll see how this I goes. I no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you would. Um, all right. Yeah. So, so, I think something else that we should kind of cover in a bit of our introductions and yeah, we're moving kind of quick, but this is a bit of a first episode. We'll see how people receive this, how it all goes down. So something they'll probably receive it about as well as the dog received your cock. So you know. I think that's important for a lot of our newer listener listeners, possibly our anti listeners, maybe just even people that stumble across us is listeners. I am an anti-listener. I will go out of my way not to listen to the... Actually, that's true. I, yeah, that's true. What does it mean to you to be 
zoosexual or to when you hear the word zoophile. Are we really using the term zoosexual now? Is that really a term that we're pushing for now? Is zoosexual? Is that, are we serious about that? Are we just going to allow that to happen? Wow. Zoosexual. Amazing. Just amazing. Hell, when you hear someone use one of, the, one of these terms, like, how does it relate? And I think since Ellie went first, why don't we have Ozzy give his sort of insight on this one first? Come on. Okay. All right, so, Ozzy, what do you... What the fuck was that? Why was there just 20 seconds of silence? Did they have to edit something out because it was incriminating? What was that? Okay. Okay. All right, so, Ozzy, what do you... What does... Amazing. ...sort of being a zoosexual mean to you? Like, what, what sort of... What sort of resonance does it have with you in terms of how it makes you feel? Is it something that you see kind of as more of a kink, a sexual thing, romantic, etc.? It is, what I believe it to be, is just as any relationship would be with humans, or and it just kind of extends on to animals as well. With it yeah, a human that can't talk or, you know, uh, think like a human can. That's right. Think. First, more than anything, the romance side, loving your partner, no matter what, if they can't do something that you should Someone be. in chat says these people need to be made into suits. I, I don't think I would want to wear a suit made of these people. Be doing it with them if they don't want to do something that you shouldn't. And um, everything else is just on top of that. Hang on. It's being first, more than anything, the romance side, loving your partner. No matter what. The romance side. Uh, you know, reenacting the lady in the tramp spaghetti scene with your dog. Uh, what? If they can't do something, that you shouldn't be doing it with them. If they don't want to do something, that you shouldn't. And um, everything else is just on top of that. The romance side will always comes first, in my opinion. And that's why I always believe that it should be for everyone else as well. And what it means what to me... What is romance? What is... what? What is what romance is there in doing what you're doing? Do you do you do you set up a a, a candlelit dinner? Do you give your dog kibble in bed? What's going on? What what's happening here? I what, do you surprise them with a gift when you come home? He is just animals should be treated just as humans. No, they shouldn't. Because they are because we are all equal in our own ways. Sure, they may not be. Yeah, homie, jellyfish are just the same. Well, you know, maybe they're maybe a jellyfish is equal in brain capacity to you, but uh, I don't think they're. I don't. I don't know about every human. I don't know about the that. exact same, um, or as smart as us, but we are equals. They can equals communicate with us, and we can communicate with them. Yeah, they're equals, guys. Think of all those lauded dog scientists and dog politicians and dog inventors. Think of all of the great sculptures and art created by dogs. You know, since we're all equal, right? There's been famous dogs that have done incredible, incredible, monumental, world-changing things, right? Dogs have been important to human history, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dogs are equal. That's sure. Not just dogs, though. Think about all the fucking mosquitoes that are out there winning Nobel Peace Prizes. Because we're all equal, right? Man, there sure is a lot of injustice in the world if every fucking bullfrog out there is, is, is owed, like, like a, a scholarship. God damn. We're and, all equal, guys. You know, that's always something that comes up whenever antis always talk to us, is they can't communicate, but they really can to us. And I think that's a big part. Maybe this is all just one of those Democrat moves to make dogs be able to vote for 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 Biden. Mm, really makes you think. Big brain stuff right there. Of why it means so much to me is that we have other things that communicate with us than just humans. 
and a lot of people just don't understand mm-hmm. that. Registered as a dogocrat. And that's why I believe that more people Ace. should be more accepting Primo and stuff. more all right with it. Like dogs I'm, are literally kids. Yeah, someone in chat says that, and they are uh, basically on the uh, intellectual level as a child. But as we've seen from most of these people, that wouldn't stop them either. Once again, kids are all equal too, right? Kids are totally... Yeah, yeah. That's the same argument that those people have, so it's reasonable to believe that they probably agree with that as well. Yeah. Especially since how young I am, because I'm only 20. About to turn 21, actually. I'm so young that a lot of people my age will disagree with me and will ridicule me. Oh, yeah. The people from 20 years older than you, they would have all been on board with it. Man, I'm glad this guy's young and has such a nice future ahead of him of uh railing chipmunks up the ass that's that's great that's people good. hate me for it which i don't understand personally but i will try to make as many people understand and love it as much as i do okay i need to i need to pause real quick because someone in chat says yo i just sitting here right thinking in this worked a man found a fat, ill bullfrog and out of his mouth called it thick, licked his lips and slipped wiener into this precious fucking fat creature. L fucking Chaim. Came? Chaim? I don't know. And then there's... Oh, is that like a... Oh, is... Oh fuck! There goes the chocolate whiskey. Is that like anti-Semitism? I I don't know, but that was a funny, funny, funny post for the most of it. I don't ranch. know. That's just a mm. little ranch, I guess, or something that's too long. But back to you, yeah, Jerry. Uh, I think right. um before I think before I get started, you know, I would like to say that have imagine listening to this person's voice. You would probably uh you you would probably be right about your first assumptions about this person. You meet them in public, they look a little weird and shifty, and then you hear their voice, and you're like, man, I bet that guy does some fucked up shit, and you'd be right. Yeah, um, in in regards to the, some of the things that you mentioned, like, you know, they may not be as smart or, or those things, I think it. Oh, the guy says it's not anti-Semitism, he's Jewish, and it's a cheer. Well, all right, then. I think really what it is is their environment that they're exposed to. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, the way people treat non-humans is is very um, representative of how people have treated other people in the past. You know, we sort of set them up to fail. You know, dog lives matter, am I right? Because we don't provide an environment that is caring you know i really can't argue i made the joke before but i'm really i'm realizing now it's not even that much of a joke these people probably are on the fucking intellectual level of the the animals that they're sticking their fucking wieners into maybe they are they are onto something i don't know they probably wouldn't fucking match with the human being because listen to this bullshit these people are like fucking a safe fell on their head they're 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 concave brained individuals. Small, tiny brain, dry like peanut. Or you know, encourages them or enables them to grow. All and dog catchers are bastards. The old which right. kind of, oh, sorry. Continue. That's oh, right. Um which which kind of is what my view of, of zoosexuality is. Is that I like, I'm legitimately, I'm sitting here and I'm like, this person's basically saying nothing. They're basically not saying anything this whole time. Just like, uh, dogs are, you know, they're, they're oppressed just like the way other people have been oppressed. And, uh, you know, that's, um, um, pretty much that's the reason why I, uh, you know, do, do the, the horrible things that I do is because they're, they're oppressed, right? And so they deserve to ha- to take my cock. It's like, I'm I'm trying to give this I'm trying to give this like okay maybe they'll make a good argument at some point and I'll be like oh huh 
really makes you think. Maybe they're right after all, but no, it never happens. Surprise, surprise, that never happens. I can't imagine. Uh, to be honest, it's not a, um, it's not a very visceral or surreal thing for me. It's, um, I like to sort of, you know, break things down a little bit so I can reflect and and just live in the moment. And that's, you know, I'm one species uh, of animal. Um, in fact, I'm actually a hybrid of many um, species of hominid. Um, and when you sort of look at it like that, you can begin to live your life in the way you want to. You know, if you build these expectations about yourself, um, you know, you have to be smart, you have to do all this and this. You know, we set ourselves up to fail in the same way we set them up to fail, the non-humans. Um, the non -humans. For me, what it means to be a zoosexual is that the extent... You know, chat, in these trying times, I have a, I have a question for you, and I would like you to tell me uh, honestly and seriously the answer. Have you ever been so far as to use, even go want to try to do, to go to farther to look more like? Leave your comments in the in the chat. Thank you. Of my family, the circle that I consider my close relatives, um, it's not decided by blood. Um, the most important criteria for me is that you know, family is something that is a privilege. You know, it's it's not a right. Um, you choose your family. And fortunately, um, there is enough common commonalities between social mammals. What are we talking about? What is dog as his family? What does that have to... Why does... How does that excuse... And even between non-social mammals and... and and social mammals. So, to me, the fucking galaxy brain stuff happening right now. These are the, I don't, I don't even know what's happening, man. Family, and that's how I see it. What about you, Green? Oh yeah, that's how I that's see it. That's actually very well thought out. That's very well thought out. All that fucking nonsense you just said. A plus, dude. I agree with all of it. Right on the money right there. Ellie, I, I can pretty much agree with you 100%. 100%, baby. And, you know, to me, being a zoosexual means putting in the long, hard hours for your partner. It means making a place for them to, to be one of your family. To, you know, it, it's kind of silly. I have over the many years I've been a Zeus. This is all just such projection, really. It's like, oh, we're making them part of the family. It's romance, guys. It's all about the romance. We're going to make them in the family. It's all about their rights, guys. It's all about how animals are equal to humans and should be treated the same. And meanwhile... At the end of the day, the dog still doesn't have a say in whether you fuck it in the ass. So, I don't know about animal rights in that situation. As I always, like, I've said this before when we've talked about these sorts of people, it's like, yeah, okay, what if the dog says no? Are you really just, all right, what if the dog obviously can't say no? What if it runs away from you while you're trying to do something? Do you need to start restraining it? Are you just going to be like, no, you don't know that you want this. He's just being fussy. It's like, where do you draw the line when you actually can't be told no physically? Probably draw the line a lot fucking sooner than these people did. But it's like the, the whole idea of, oh, no, the dog wants this. This is because the dog is equal. It's like, yeah. And then are you really going to stop when the dog is not interested? Are you really going to stop? Do you really do I am I expected to believe that you'll stop? Because I don't. Sexual, in the community, out of the community, anti's all the the Zunision? sort of fud when it comes to the HSUS and for the past year or so that I've been on Twitter, you know I, I see it so commonly. Everybody thinks that this is so easy. 
Everybody mm-hmm. thinks that this is some kind of fetish, that this is some kind of silly little kink. Oh, no. Well, when, you're, when your partner's outside and it starts to storm and rain, I've done this, Ellie. You know I've, I've told you about it. Mm-hmm. When they're outside playing in your backyard or whatever and you go out in the pouring rain and striking lightning to bring them in and dry them off and get them warm and, you know... When you're going out at night, if if they've been sick or something. Yeah, you know, man, I'm going to tell you something. Um, if your equal partner that's equal to you is currently living in a doghouse outside of your residence, that's a sign. I hate to be Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy over here, but there's your sign. All right. Something and you you know have an enclosure for them outside you know as your usual uh, an enclosure for your spouse outside as you usually would you know you marry a nice girl you move out to a house in the country you got the big you got the big country house you got the the little the little confinement cube that your wife is able to go into and uh you know when she's good you take her upstairs and and you know uh have your way with her it's very romantic i promise but after that she has to go back to the companion cube i mean compartment cube whatever not companion cube that's a different thing you get what i'm saying though it's like no you got a fucking dog living in a dog house i'm sorry at that point yeah 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 I don't You've been know. ill or something in case you know, you're your not having sign. something off of a carpet or whatnot. When you're going out oh, at all hours of the night, cell, yes. check on them and give them food and fresh water. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's it's not easy. No, it's not easy. It's also not easy fucking, you know, sailing across a sea of fucking lava. That's why most people wouldn't do it. It's not easy. It's like, it's I wonder if there's some level of like, because the way they, 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 this guy describes it anyway, where he's like, oh, it's like you got to care for it. You got to go out there and give it the food and the, the water and everything. It's like, I wonder if this is the kind of mindset that people have when they're like attracted to someone who's fucking like comatose or half brain dead or something and they're like oh i get to take care of them and save them and occasionally do what i want with them but mostly i get to save them it's like very dangerous mindsets here and i kind of i i get irritated (laughs) when i hear people you know sort of pardon my language here but you're nothing but a dog fucker you're you know you there says naughty wives are put into the wife wiggler what does the wiggler do that's ominous you just need to you need to go see a therapist you have a kink you wouldn't mm-hmm. say that if you knew everything that goes into it just like all the blood sweat and tears that goes into it the same equivalence of a human relationship where you try to set each other up for success I've made my mistakes in the past, but it's the same thing with non-human relationships. I've made my mistakes in the past, and that's what I'm here to advocate today, ladies and gentlemen. Make my mistakes, please. You need to set each other up for success, Mm -hmm. and that requires a lot of hard work. Yeah. Set each other um, up for success. Understanding that, you know... You know, you gotta dress for success. You gotta dress for the job that you want. You gotta... You gotta dress for the dog that you wanna fuck. It's uh, it's understandable. You gotta do the same with the dog, I guess. Whatever the fuck that means. That literally means nothing. What is that? What is? What did he say again? Set each other up for success. Mm-hmm. Set each other up for success. What the fuck is success for a dog? What is success for a dog or a cat or fucking a gerbil or something? What are you gonna do? Fuck it. Put it in some kind of dog show pageant shit. What is success for a dog? How the fuck do you quantify this? What the fuck does that mean? You are just saying nothing at this point. I hate you. I hate you. That requires a lot of hard work. Yeah, that's like um, understanding. Oh, uh, giving them treats, of you know, course. That makes sense. individuals, just as we are. You know? Absolutely. And I think it's very easy for people who you know are that kind of anti 
Um, it's not it's not nice to hate someone, dork, says the person in chat. That's correct. It is not nice to hate someone. We do not say the word hate in this household. We also do not say the word stupid because they're both offensive. We also put pepper on our ravioli in this household. Because we have a lot of at least we don't fuck our dogs um, around us. Like, for example, if if you think that zoophilia is wrong and you're listening to this podcast, you know, you're you're listening to this on an electrical device that somebody made. Um, and that kind of implied evidence is is that you know, that we are unique or, or separate to non to non humans. But these what you really have to consider is the way in which certain traits or you know characteristics of a species arises over time did this person get hit by a car did a car run over this person's fucking brain 17 times is that why they're this way is that the reason that they're like this what the fuck is this? What am I listening to? This person's like, oh yeah, the reason why dogs and humans are equal is because, well, you're currently watching this on an electrical device, so uh, therefore dogs can use com computers and phones too, right? Like, what the fuck are you even saying? You're making your own argument sound worse. Holy shit, I can't wait for the fucking simp at the end to be like, oh, that's a beautiful argument. 100% agree with that one. That's so well-spoken and well-said, well-defined, researched. Makes a lot of sense, too. I just... Um, so, for example, you know, you may have people who have taught you and people who have exposed you to new technologies, and, and now they seem so mundane. You don't even think about how important it is um, or how amazing it is that you are able to read the words on the screen and and listen to this podcast but the very reason why you can do that is because you were enabled at some point in your life you were shown and and maybe you had to take some initiative and that's it's really the same for a lot of social mammals um, and even mammals just non-social mammals like cats for example um, we all have the same fundamental building blocks of, you know, information comes in and output goes out. And it's the way in which you learn and what you're exposed to, which ultimately defines how you are in this very moment. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Beautiful. And likewise, that could Fucking also beautiful. be indicative of how you feel totally as an agree with this. You know, maybe you feel... Just beautiful. Upset because you feel like your worldview is being attacked or or ridiculed. And I mean, for me personally, I love people. I don't think that. Um, I'm trying to be nice here. Like I'm trying to be as nice as I can, uh, given the circumstances. I'm trying to reasonably understand what the fuck is meant by the term. By by the whole by the whole leap of logic, whatever it was, this complete unrelated tangent of like, well, you're using a computer or a phone, so someone had to enable you to do that at some point, and what does this have to do with anything? Are you high? I don't want humanity to suffer or. Anything like that, I, I actually get quite happy when I see people thriving. And I feel like if you are an anti and you're very angry about this or people who express themselves um, or even non-humans being allowed to express their autonomy and their individuality, if that upsets you, really ask yourself, what is it about that that is upsetting you? Is it is it the idea that Maybe because they're getting to experience something that you haven't. Oh, yeah. Or, or maybe that. Guys, I regret to inform you that the reason that we all feel like this is a, a, a hot load of uh, insane garbage is just because we are jealous that they have a, a fun, cool type of relationship that we are just too beta and 
bitch to try out. You know, I get it now. I, I'm wrong. I've been wrong this whole time. Clearly, I've been bested. It's embarrassing that maybe the, there's this idea that they could experience such things that we call high um, intelligence. Um, there could be many explanations, and I really want you to, as, as a listener, if you have any issues with Sophia, don't just follow in line with the way that society talks about it. Because throughout society, at certain points in time, it was considered normal, it was considered an important part of culture. So, That's absolutely right. Uh -huh. Instead of being a victim to your culture, to what you've been told. At certain points in time, it was a perfectly acceptable thing to sacrifice virgins in volcanoes and, uh, and uh, uh, kill witches. So, um, yeah, fuck yourself with a cactus. Really think about it and then make your final decision, which you can then edit in the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something I'd I would like to add quickly onto this is even though I've been, well, anybody that's followed me on social media knows there's times that I can be a bit of a heel. One in chat says that this person's literally saying, don't knock it till you try it. More or less, yeah. It's like, well, you're just jealous that we have this interesting relationship. And uh, remember, it's been normal in parts of history. You know, uh, those people in Scotland who would be, uh, who would fuck their sheep. Like, yeah, that was normal. I, you know... That's such a bad argument, it's astounding, really. It's like, even if you think back to, like, fucking any fiction you can imagine, just, just fiction, just fiction, not even real history, just fiction. Imagine, like, Sherlock Holmes times, 1800s-ish, someone's fucking a goat. Is that guy the, 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 the hero of the story? No, that guy's a weirdo. Who just lives off in a fucking shed and nobody talks to him. Even like 200 years ago, that guy was the weirdo. Probably as far back as you can go, that guy was the weirdo. There was no classic literature about a guy who fucks his dog, who slays a dragon or whatever the fuck. There was no zoophile hero. That guy was always just some weird dude who laid with the fucking donkeys. What a bad argument. Oh my god. Um, but that kind of dives into another reason as to why myself, Ellie, and Ozzy decided to do this. Is we feel that this can be a better medium to reach people. If you want to talk to us, please do so. Send us a DM on Twitter. You can find not only the Twitter information, on the Twitter profile you'll be able to find our email address. You can send us DMs. Oh no, dude, don't give us your Twitter, because I'm not going to send you any DMs, but I cannot stop other people from doing that, and I can assure you that they're not going to be very nice. Hell, I'd have to make sure everything's on the up and up and okay it with my co-hosts, right. but we would even be willing to have someone as a guest. Oh. If there's something they really <laughs> wanted to talk about with us. Guys. Guys. Now, I'm not much of a debater, but I would think about it and try to understand our worldview and sort of show, you know, what we're made of and even to give us some better. Actually, I have just thought about it and uh, to go on there and debate with them would be um, to in any way. uh I, I, I feel like that would just sort of uh, solidify their their thing. It would it would justify their uh, I'm not going to justify their nonsense with a with a response, I guess, is what you could say. I don't I don't need to I don't need to. It's ridiculous. It's it's nonsense. It doesn't actually need to be. It doesn't actually need to be debated, really. Um, Respect. That would be stupid. And something just to add on to what Ellie just said in terms of sort of mind opening and communication and input output 
there are now videos popping up because of Christina Hunger, who is an SLP. She is a speech language pathologist, and we'll touch on this more in an episode, but I wanted to just give an example here. Her dog Stella now, I believe it's like 40 plus words that she knows it's how to. But it's how many, Ozzy? Sorry. 43. It's 43. Okay, so she knows 43 individual words, and she can form sentences and constructs with them. Now, the reason she's able to do this is because she's been enabled to do so. Uh, wow, the dog knows 43 whole words. That's incredible. That's like, what, a, uh, a four-year-old? Uh, maybe a five-year-old? Maybe even a three-year-old. I'm not really sure. Yeah, dude. No, I agree with you now. Totally. She's had the chance to now experience that. And this is... Never something. mind. Apparently toddlers know about 200 words. So, uh, yeah. Dog is uh, is is less uh, less uh, me uh, in intellectually advanced, I guess, than a, than a toddler. How about that one? No, no, they're equal, though. It's fine. It's I fine. That me personally, I know Ellie and by the sounds of it, Ozzy, for sure. This is one thing we hope to encourage, share and actually put forth the idea of zoo sexuality is to sum it up in one simple statement. Give them a chance. Give them the opportunity. Give them the tools. Something yeah. I would add to this was I uh, I came out to one of my old friends as zoosexual. And I made all the correct arguments, of course. I asked a friend of mine to help me. Thank you, Winter. And in the end, they didn't really listen to me. All I said was, we will never be able to be equals. Which is not true. Yes, it is. We give them the right circumstances. We give them the right environment. The right. Place. Are these motherfuckers actually making the argument that no, 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 dogs are equal to humans? We just haven't taught them yet. Really? Really, though? Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that train their dogs a lot of things. And I feel like even a dog that's like. You know, an elderly dog. I don't know how old a dog typically gets, but let's say like a 20 year old dog or whatever. It's like. I, I figure even at that point, the dog's not going to start talking to you. Even at that point, the dog's not going to start doing chemistry. Even at that point, the dog will not hack into the Pentagon mainframe. I'm sorry, dude. That's not the way it works. To thrive, we can just. You provide the right tools. Yeah, and then they can speak to us. Like with Stella, she uses 43 different buttons and makes her own senses. And that's insane. Because <sighs> the fact that we've never known this before and just knowing it now is just mind-boggling. And it um, makes me a little bit sad that we never have. And my friend uh, sadly did not understand and did not believe me, and I hadn't cut ties with them. But... It you know, was. you know, chat. Listen, it it might only be forty three words that the dog is able to understand, but at least that's better than the dog understanding fourteen words. An eye opening experience for me because I never dealt with someone like that before. That just shows that a lot of people right. just don't think that we can ever be equals, but we can and we will be mm. at some point, hopefully. And yeah, that's um, mm. that's why we're making this podcast is set a kind of groundwork for the community for zoosexuals to be in. So, because um, to my knowledge, nobody's ever been able to do it successfully before. Maybe they've tried, but they've been successful to actually stand up on some sort of groundwork. In I love the I love the, the minor part of this, this video, where the guy's just like, yeah, I told my one of my best friends about how I uh, am the way I am. And I gave them my best argument about it. And uh, that was a total failure. And they said that we would never be uh, equal. And then they probably ran away from me. Um, I just love that that's just like a small throwaway part of this video. Just, yeah, my, uh, the people that know me uh, are terrified of me and probably hate me at this point. But 
you know, I feel like I'm right, though. That's fine. Build up fine. from there and have just been able to fall down because they've never had the right circumstances. And that's mm. kind of what my goal was to achieve in this podcast is to make a groundwork for everything and make everything to be able to build mm. up. And then we could finally make it regularized again. Because it was I at some point they... we made the furry fandom. <laughs> okay, now continue. I think that I think okay, we have the genius talking once again. I think after this genius, uh, fucking brain yacht of a person interjects with their absolute fucking stream of conscious word vomit bullshit, uh, I think after that we will switch to another episode of the podcast. The, what do they um, have to say? One of the primary issues with you know, like when you have people who are really adamant about holding on to their, their worldview is that as a species, as an animal, ourselves, you know, we have the the same limitations in that, you know, we're a victim to our culture, the, the ideology of our cultures. Um, we just sort of follow suit. Um, and it's it's quite ironic because this is actually a constant, it's a paradigm that affects multiple species, um, communities and cultures. Like, for example, if you have a, uh, take any social mammal that isn't human, if they behave in a certain way that doesn't follow the norm, often they're ostracized. So it's quite funny that the behavior that people show when in, you know, responding to something that isn't considered culturally normal in, at that point in the era, that they are sort of demonstrating the, the relation, the relation between social mammals um, by their inability to accept difference. Um, and one of the things... Really it's just an inability to accept difference, guys. Really, it's kind of ironic if you think about it. These stupid humans thinking that we're different from animals, but you, your baser instincts, are just the same as the animals. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Well, actually, it doesn't make me think that much. It makes me think, what if a fucking murderer or, or like rapist showed up one day and said, Yeah, but I mean, you know, hey, come on. If uh, if uh, if a fucking dog was being a bit weird, they'd ostracize him. So, like, hey, it's okay that I'm a literal criminal. Come on, bro. You gotta open your mind, dude. You just don't understand. It's like, you could make the same argument for anything. This is the flimsiest... I'm glad this person is a, ga is, is a host of this fucking podcast, because, my God. My God, they do my fucking job for me. I don't even have to say anything. Really funny, uh, not funny, but really interesting from an anthropo anthropological point of view, is that we have this sort of um, grouping mechanism where at first it would have been a very small group of people and they would have said, well, uh, you know, I can do this and because I can do this, you can't do this or you could never be able to, to do this. Um, and as society has, or civilization has, expanded you know these groups have gotten bigger we've had to compensate for that so you know at some point it, it was you know my skin color makes me more important and your skin color makes you less important um and then even from there you see uh, that society has changed in so many ways very quickly you know now we're very adamant about making sure that people are recognized um as people you know, we don't we don't have those old sort of eugenic or racial principles of of the past in a lot of Western countries. Like, um, for example, uh, I mean, I don't really have to give examples. I mean, people know what that's about. Like, you know, you don't have absolutely, yeah, yeah. Those those out groups Guys, that just expand. Hitler. I know you all have your opinions right now. And I know you're all arguing about why this guy's worldview is wrong. Because that's what it is. It's a worldview. It's not him abusing animals, we promise. Um, but all I have to say is... Hitler. 
There you go. Stream over, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking mic drop. Place the mic down gently, rather. Not a mic drop, but it's close. And it to the point where it's no. If you're in the group, you're, you're some form of human. And if you're out of the group, you're not some form of human. So we know that from the past, that that outgrouping effect expands. Kind of like everything <laughs> in the universe, if you think about it. Yeah, that's true. Hitler did, in fact, love his dog. How about that? Um, it expands. Good analogy, considering I'm an astrophysics <laughs> nut. Anyway, yeah. go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the natural rate of, of civilization, and, and we can hold it back, and we will, because, you know, we've... Did these ass clowns really relate race to dudes fucking dogs? Oh, of course. Is this your first tangle with these sorts of people? Oh, yeah. This is just common. They do this all the time. I'm surprised they went with race this time and not uh, homosexual people. But, you know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it spicy sometimes. Drop out a fucking Hitler trap card and just like, damn, everybody's fucking transfixed. What do you say to that? Oh, yeah. You guys who won't let me fuck Fido. Ah, Hitler. Fuck you. I win. Okay. One thing that's really important to recognize is that we've been through all of this before. And this is just another version right. of it. And, um, you know. Yeah. Also, are we going to address the part where they basically, by saying this, are equating uh, other races to dogs and animals? I guess they're equating everybody to dogs and animals, but uh, I don't know about that one. Sir, like, it doesn't matter whether you say you're conservative or progressive. Um, as rude as this sounds, you're not doing anything new. You are doing the exact same cyclic behaviors that have happened since essentially the dawn of civilizations for everything from the ancient Mayans and Sumerians right on back to... Didn't you say that do that fucking your animals or whatever was like a timeless human tradition or some shit? Doesn't the argument you're making now completely contradict that? Uh -oh. These men started grouping up in packs. You know, the, the mm. same thing sort of has the same sort of play. It's just on a slightly different scale through a different time setting and via different medium. That's all it is. Yeah. And one of the funny um, patterns that you see with sort of those political values, <laughs> pardon me, is that you, so people, the, the new conservatives are actually, you could, you could really call them. You know, I did say that I was going to move on to the next uh, episode after this, but I now they're getting political. And I hate to get political, but uh, gas these people, honestly. The liberal. Well, what are they saying about conservatives? Hang on. I actually, can, you, could, you could really call them the liberals of the past. Right. So the new conservative value of marriage, for example, could be considered very liberal and outrageous by 100 years ago standards. Absolutely it would be. So when we can recognize these patterns, we can start to patterns you know instead of just being at this this is quote being a figure in the landscape we can now really think objectively and become the shape of our land guys i'm realizing something is this is this entire argument return to monkey is this person's whole argument just return to monkey just go back to baser instincts and fuck animals. It's fine. Return to monkey. Escape. Okay. That, that makes sense. All, uh, yeah. One thing that we all have to remember is that history repeats itself. If you look, history always repeats itself in some way, and this is just another thing that is happening. History yeah. repeats itself, but it's also important to remember one thing. If you can find a way to, to actually talk to someone, to get them to sort of open their mind to a new principle, you can break history circle, even if it's kind of viciously. 
Uh-huh. You know, it, it, mm. it can happen, but you have to reach people in the right sort of. Thing is, we're all. This whole podcast is completely ignoring the uh, the first hurdle that must be. We're we're not at the point yet of talking about like like normalizing this in society. Maybe these people think that people are, but no, we're not. You're not at that point yet. You need to overcome the argument about how are you not abusing the animal? Because they're doing all this shit about, oh, we're equal, and, you know, you gotta get it through to people, you know, you gotta break the cycle or whatever, and it's like, we're not there yet. We're still in stage one. We're still in convince the world that you're not rapists, which you have not yet done. And frankly, by completely omitting anything about that stage, makes you seem a little more guilty. A little bit. Uh, Setting. Um, I think actually we're going to move on from this one. We're almost halfway through the first episode. I think it's time to move on to, uh, I don't know, what do we want? Do we want a slice of zoo life? Do we want the mammalities, an introduction, and domestic rehabilitation? Is this like re-education for dogs to make them more susceptible to your fucking crime? Uh, uh, intelligence and personhood. Are we going to talk about how dogs are people too? I'm so confused, man. A K break? No break, but we might get a K respite or something after all of this is done. Stick around to the end for some eye bleach, I guess. Um, I guess I'm going to... Uh, someone says the slice of life of a zoo is bad, so I guess we'll take a look at that one. Kinda Greetings, everyone, the other and two, welcome though. back to the podcast. For our new listeners, I recommend you go back and listen to our first episode before... Oh yeah, you said so much of value and worth in the first episode that it's uh, it's really imperative that you go back and watch. Continuing, but if you choose to just listen from here, welcome. So, a couple of things to mention here before we get into the meat of this is we've been having some platform problems, so it's likely that you're... Now listening to us through YouTube, or you've gotten wind of us through some place like Zooville or the Zoo Writers Guild. What were those two names? What are those things that you just said? Through YouTube, or you've gotten wind of us through some place like Zooville or the Zoo Writers Guild. Zooville or the Zoo Writers Guild. What is that? World of Warcraft? Some other game? Guild? Is that a real world guild? Or what are we talking here? Zooville, I'm assuming, is another website. Are these the are these the hot spots for these people? Thanks for giving us that intel. Very nice. We've had some issues with Spotify and Anchor basically mass reporting us, and we've even had issues with our Twitter, which we're trying to get resolved, but have had no word back from. Anyways, we've got something a little special for you today. We I'd actually- like to point out, by the way, that apparently YouTube was their backup option. Apparently they were on some other platform, I guess. I'm not sure if it was Spotify or Apple Music or whatever the fuck, but... uh. Now they've had to they've had to go back to YouTube instead, which really uh, is cool. YouTube, it's, that's cool. That's great. Um, we have a guest with us. So I'd like to point out that saying the word cunt is on par with saying uh, racial slurs, according to YouTube. This is fine, though. No problem here. This is not in any way a problem. Yeah. I'll let him introduce gotcha. himself and say a little bit about himself. Go ahead. Astro Ava. Oh, God, this person sounds even more uh, slimy it seems now. He might be having some connection issues. I didn't hear a thing from him. <laughs> nope, oh, no. If you're going to fucking do a podcast like this, can you fucking. Can you fucking invest in something better than a rock band microphone from 2008? Motherfucker. It's still recording. Uh, There it goes. He's back. Welcome back, Esther. I'm sorry. Welcome back. (laughs) 
I had a really good. Uh, what did you hear of that? Nothing. None. Really? The moment Not you start talking, it lifts. Okay, sorry. That's um, good. Hey guys, my name's Astro. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me on. Uh, I just watched that first episode. So this is a new, different zoophile. Great. Remember to take note of the voices, everybody. If you hear a voice that you recognize, you might want to, uh, you know, you might want to talk to that person. I thought you guys were a great bunch of people. And so I talked to Winter and, you know, I shared my story about my partner, Nova, and I just can't wait to be a part of this podcast and get to know you all better. Partner. Thank you. You know, I'm going to say if your partner is an animal, it's at the very most, probably a 70, 30 partnership. Uh, at the very most. Not equal. Thank you. Uh, gotcha. That's awesome. And as usual, I'm here with Ellie and Ozzy again. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> All right. So we're doing kind of another lighthearted topic this week. So, you know, last week or, well, it's been two weeks ago now, we done introductions and sort of a get to know the crew and whatnot. But today we'd like to do... This will probably be titled something like a little slice of zoo life. So we're going to kind of go into detail about, you know, our partners. So this is going to be the, uh, the the beach episode of Zoophile podcast. Some companions, what they mean to us. Things like, you know, what's some of your day to day. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. And I'll have Ellie go first. So. Oh. Our first little oh good the fucking genius the tent the, the 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 galaxy brain genius the fucking five hundred head is gonna give us a, a slice of their life. Well, first I woke up and I had a piece of toast and then I went out and then I did some shopping and then I came home and I had a piece of toast. The <laughs> point here is basically a tiny bit of your day. So I understand you have. Well, I've known you for long enough to know this, but you can enlighten some of our, you know, listeners if you want. But you have a companion named Russ, I believe. So why don't you, Mm -hmm. you know, tell everyone a little bit about sort of what you two enjoy enjoy doing during your day. Bear says in three separate messages, I feed the dog, I walk the dog, I fuck the dog. That's a pretty good to do list for each day right there. Um, well, I think firstly... Who says these people aren't devoted to their partner? Uh, what would be most important to mention is that um, Russ is not my partner. Um, we, I just, Russ is not my partner. Okay, what are you on a friends with benefits relationship here? Consider him a family member. Oh, um, so this is dog incest then. Is that what? Is that better? Do, or do we think that's better? I don't think that's better. We're very close in that sense. Um, he's the most important person in my life. Am I expected to believe that by what this person is saying, they don't ha- have sex with the animal? Really? Okay. He, I mean, he really enjoys eating. His favorite food at the moment is um, egg. Egg. Um, his favorite food often changes. It's the one Is egg that good for dogs. Prefers to eat. So um, normally I don't really eat eggs, but when I, you know, when we hang out and spend time together, I cook him his eggs in the morning. Um, he likes to, you know, we like to share, and um, we spend most of the time just hanging out. Um, we sleep um, in the same room. He has his own bed. If he he I mean, he changes bed, um, he goes from the his special little um, foam mattress thing uh, made for dogs and onto my uh, well our bed. So um, we have lots of cuddles, and you know, he's very he's very aggravating at times. You know, he steps on my hair. I have very long hair. So he he steps on it and makes me want to bash my head in repeatedly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, what about? Oh, you? it's aggravating sometimes. You know, you have a partner, and sometimes you just want to fucking bash your fucking skull, bloody. <laughs> so how is it for you in the day to day life? You Aussie. 
Um, I don't have a partner, but that's all I can really say actually on it. <laughs> that's it. How about you, Astro? I know that you have a partner. This motherfucker doesn't even have. This motherfucker doesn't even have. Imagine being such a loser. You can't even get a date when you fuck dogs. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Nova, right? Know. Yeah, Nova. This dude's fucking. This dude's fucking doggy Tinder is just all swiping left. Uh, um, you know, is she's, it right? She's I great. Forget. I, Whatever the bad I love her is. to death. So I think we have a really good relationship. Just, um, you know, if you if you think about the most mellow, but also most excited, crazy. <laughs> jumps on everything but then we'll sit next to you for hours um type of beautiful german shepherd someone says don't judge claw the dating scene is rough a lot of other people also say zoo incel or zoo cell both of these both of these are valid then that's her and she just uh really has been like the light of my life ever since you know driving two thousand miles to pre- ever since the incident you can get her and 2,000 miles back. <laughs> so I think ever since then, we've just had this bond. But, you know, and like you know, many other zoos say about their dogs, it's unbreakable. Yeah, I, I think I can, I can agree with both, you know, Ellie and Astro here. Um, anybody who's known me in the community for a while knows that I have a wonderful companion and partner named Loki. He's kind of the opposite of Nova. He's always excited about everything and always very adventurous. So lots of lots of interesting times had between the two of us. He loves to go for walks. We love to go out in the yard and just play or. Oh, yeah. This dog is very different from my other dog. You know, kind of the polar opposite. If you think about it, you know, this dog un unusual for, you know, my dog is not like the other dogs unusual for dogs my dog likes to you know go for walks and play and uh you know eat and sleep and you know generally not get molested by me overall but uh you know we can't always get what we want am i right share snacks that are healthy for the both of us or just any number of things every day is new to him and i and every day's sort of an adventure between the two of us so it it gets interesting at times and of course in agreement with ellie even though i don't have long hair there has been things that loki's done that's made me want to bash my head in repeatedly yeah i agree chat let's get a good old egg in these trying times everybody in chat egg but (laughs) we work through it and it all works out in the end so that's the biggest thing i'm sorry go ahead oh you're fine you're fine go ahead (laughs) I think that's one of the biggest things that, um, you know, I've seen from joining this great group. Are we really supposed to believe that any of these people are like adjusted normal people? Because the more you think about it, if you just like think about it in isolation for a second, there's such an undercurrent of something, even when they're trying to explain how nice their relationship is or whatever, and they're doing their best to appeal to you and your humanity or what not, whatever, and be like, hey, come on, bro, listen, I'm happy, and, you know, and all this stuff, and I'm just like, if you really distill this all down, this is a person who is essentially forcing a a small helpless creature into uh, a relationship that only benefits this person. And, uh, you know, um, you can dress that up as much as you want, but when you really just stop for a second and think about that, you're like, huh, yeah, you're all probably awful people. Then this is just a small slice of what a piece of shit you really are. Interesting. And, you know, it's not, being zoo isn't all about I have to have a partner or the dog is, you know, next to me. I have to do it. It's about really yeah. finding someone who you click with and it's another person and they have their own thoughts and feelings. And, you know, you have to understand and know and, and feel what they're feeling. Yeah. And, someone else in chat says they're very coy about, uh, actually mentioning the zoophilia They'll talk about how it's romantic and their day-to-day lives with the dogs and whatnot. 
but they seem to n- have have not been bringing up so far the actual ins and outs, if you will, of the uh, the procedures. And uh, it, it kind of feels it uh, as the person in chat says, it kind of feels like they're uh, they know on some level they should be ashamed of that. So it's interesting. It's been magical to go through that with my partner. And I know for many you others, you have to right? eat all the it's eggs. Insane. That's absolutely right. And, you know, there is <laughs> just kind of as a fair warning to folks, there's probably going to be times where during this episode, some of our later points might have me, me and Ellie in particular tearing up. We've had yeah. and lost past partners due to age and, you know, health related issues. Whoa. And Guys, it's, it really is something that's incredible to learn, even at a young age in my case. So hang on know, just a second. Hang on. Let me just uh, and law being. Let me just go ahead and do this. Just uh, there we go. And that's the wrong video. But what we're looking for is. There you go. OK. Me and Ellie in particular tearing up. We've had yeah. and lost past partners due to age and you know health related issues. And it's it really is something that's incredible to learn even at a young age in my case. So, you know, don't be surprised if you hear us stutter or, you know, pause <laughs> for a moment later on. But anyway. Uh, I suppose we should move on to our next point. So, uh, let me say something, actually. Go ahead. Some, just going off a little bit of what Astro said. I do not have a partner, as I've said. I um, don't really plan on getting one anytime soon, because I don't have enough money. But I do have dogs, and as much as I want a partner, as much as I love to have one, they aren't the ones, you know. Just because you have one next to you doesn't mean that... Like, oh, so I want to have a partner. I'm going to have one. It's like, no, you got to you got to choose the right one. It's like an actual legitimate relationship. It's not yeah, just, they, they you know. Wow, it's almost like an actual legitimate relationship. Almost. Not quite, you know, given that they don't say anything back to you. But that's fine. Though. Choose you as well, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a two-sided thing, you know. Just like every other relationship. If you don't take that into account, then, you know. Sorry to say it, but you're just not doing it right, you know. Absolutely. And I would like to make kind of a quick sort of interjection here before we move on to the next point. And this especially... I'd just like to interject. What you people are referring to as Linux is actually new Linux. Thank you. It goes to new zoos or possibly even some of our listeners from places like Zooville, for example. And I'm not using this as just a call out, but for some people that might be maybe a bit more fetishistic or something... Another thing I want to make very clear here is that these relationships are not all about sex. They're not yeah. about their their genuine. Karen, I'm sorry I had to time you out. Thank you for highlighting that message, and I do appreciate it. But I don't need uh, people to be linking to these sorts of websites in the chat. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the timeout, but uh, please please don't link to websites like this in the Twitch chat. I don't think that's a good idea. Relationships with genuine people, both human and non-human behind them. And it's not just out, you know, it's, it's not just a thing for you to have sex. You know, like a lot of people might think that I know a few people myself that think that it's just a fetish type thing, which it's just not, you know, it's like if you have an actual relationship with a human being, you know, would you and want I them think, to be talking? They're basically, again, trying to say that this is a sexuality and not a fetish. And I mean, for all I fucking know, it might be. But I mean, you know, I'm sorry. That doesn't make it acceptable. Sorry. Would you like that? You know, And Ozzy, I think you touched on a great point. I think a lot of people, you know, especially um, maybe if we have even an anti listening to this. Yeah, what if we did have an anti listening to this? I'd like to point out someone in chat says, Am I a zoophile if I only fuck fish? Did you know that there's actually no such thing as fish? What you know of as a, as a, as a salmon is actually closer to a camel 
than a real fish. There's no such thing as a fish. That's only the uh, that's only the second worst thing you've just heard today. Absolutely, they, um, they see it really as, uh, you know, as you're a terrible person because you're just using them for your own self gain. And that's not at all what you know me or anyone in this call or any zoo that's actually, you know, in love with their animal, in love with their partner is going to feel like. We're 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 in it for everything, the good times and the bad. Um, you know, Nova's in heat right now, so I'm <laughs> taking care of that. And just you know, we 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 fight for our well, partner. Apparently, birds aren't real. Also, that's cool. That's cool, bro. Very cool. I, I believe you. The, rest of us. the worst part of that message is I believe you, and I'm sure you're right on some level. But also, that's cool, bro. Some and partners as well are neutered and they can't do anything like that. Yeah. And for most people that I know, that's not even a problem. It's a thing. You know, it, well, it wouldn't ever be a problem either. That's yeah. true. Um, we actually may cover that kind of thing in a later episode. Um, yeah. Same, I, think same, it, same. I think it would be an important thing, but yeah, we should probably move on. Um, but yeah. both very good points from Astro and Ozzy there. So, sort of our next thing is how in, how attached are you and your partner or even your companion? So, I know for me, when Loki first came into my life, it was a bit of a surprise. Um, you know, some people near me had had some shepherd pups, and I went and looked at them, and I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting to end up with a German shepherd the day I ended up with one at that point in time. It had been over 12 years since I had pups. So this isn't even just a dog relationship. This is also grooming. Man. It just keeps getting worse when they just casually are like, oh, yeah, I picked my uh, partner, uh, my equal partner up when it was like a week old as a puppy. Yeah, bro. And they don't see any problem with what they just said. And that's the scary. That's the true scary part is that they don't see it. I had a partner or companion or anything really of my own. And. When it happened, there was, you know, a lot of rough patches starting out. There's a lot of us learning each other, figuring each other out. But now, if he wasn't there waiting for me or there with me in the morning, you know, I would be destroyed. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. It would, you know, it would pretty much be the end of the world for Imagine him. you're the guy who knows this person and you... uh you know, your dog has a bunch of puppies, big old litter. You decide to give away some puppies to the neighborhood. And your your friend Tim from down the street, he walks up. Hey, Bill. Hey, Tim. We're giving away some puppies today. You want to buy one? I'll take that one. Okay, it's like, man, you wouldn't feel good about yourself in the future when all that comes out. Me, in a sense, because we've become so close and we've started to relate, talk to each other more and kind of settle in and whatnot. And it helps, too, that he's becoming a, you know, a, a, a prime young man. He's starting to mature into his, you know, end of adolescence, more into full adulthood. So... It's just, like I said, there's no way I could essentially live without him now. Mm -hmm. Winter, mm -hmm. I think I think something that you said the other day to me, just in private, um, really resonated with me, and I thought maybe we could bring it up, was um, All right. kind, of, uh, kind of the way you and Loki like, do play, whereas, you know, like, he has his own place, but he's also like part of your life and 
how, you know, like how your family doesn't like him. Maybe you could explain a little bit more about that and how, you know, it's difficult and how there's different living situations for different zoos, but we're all trying to make like the best of it. How your family doesn't like him? Is this about to be a story about some guy having to, oh man, that's a sitcom. Dan's a 22-year-old journalist, and he just moved back in with his parents. But there's trouble at home when he brings in his new bride-to-be, a dog! Oh, the wa- the wacky laughs are gonna are gonna ensue there. Right. That was just um, I think that can be something maybe we go into more in depth. But there's some members of my family that aren't exactly thrilled with Loki that are even scared of him. You know, because oh, he barked at me, or you know, he's really big, or you know, when you when I bring him over, you know, why is he in my house, for example? Um, and I think this kind of stresses the point. Is- well, I'm gonna go with he's in your house because this guy brought him over. I think that's a pretty point A to point B sequence of events right there. Is that a lot of folks, some zoo, unfortunately, even will view them as you know just animals they're not people they're not they don't try to entertain the non-humans perspective on this they don't try to broaden their understandings broaden your understandings guys you just don't understand you're just a small brained idiot these people have the right of it you just don't get it you just aren't evolutionarily and evolved enough or something uh, i think that's a i think that's a bit oxymoronic but still so you get a lot of shortcomings i see it a lot of the times from quote unquote normal pet owners and even from antis so mm. that's an important thing to touch on and you know something else is that zoos like myself and others that might not be in the best of living circumstances all the time you know, if we're spending time with family for the holidays or whatever, we'll we'll make do. I mean, I would sacrifice quite a lot for Loki, and that's something we'll, you know, touch on later in this episode. But, you know, mm-hmm. I think you kind of touched on it, Ellie, but you and Russ are very close from, you know, what I've known from talking to you in private. Yeah. Um, how I met Russ um, was really quite... Um, in some way, you know, it was very. Uh, we locked eyes from across the, the the airport. I was a traveler on my way to nowhere. He was someone's pet, I presume. But uh, that night, it all changed. My, what you would call so a romantic, guys. Um, it's a miracle. I had hallelujah, lost my hallelujah, hallelujah! Um, Praise Jesus. About three years ago, and I I thought. Um, at this point, when I got Russ, it was about a year ago, um, I thought, well, I need to, I need to, you know, move on. Maybe I can help someone. And here's the thing. I think this is an important thing to put as well, is that I wasn't looking for a partner. I was looking for someone to invite into my family. Um yeah, I remember everybody. You know, because I think everyone... This is the person who doesn't have a partner, per se. They have a family member. You know, we like to think of ourselves as kind of a family around here. We're not like other businesses. Uh, the dog's a family member, uh, so technically that makes everything a little bit worse, but... Uh, mm. Deserves a chance at life. And for me, when I first met Ross... Um, I had actually, before I met him, I'd kind of given up because I went on um, to look for any kind of, you know, senior dog who needs a family, you know, someone who, someone who was being given up, basically. And, you know, I I saw a few dogs and, and, um, you know, I had a few throwaway relationships, a couple of uh, couple of uh, one night stands at the dog kennel. You know, I've seen a few different dogs, but then I met Russ. Those sure were unavailable, and after about three of them, I gave up. But it was as I was just giving up 
and just sort of trying to deal with the loss and all those things. Um, an ad popped up, and it says that, and it said that there was these puppies um, who needed a home because the person who um, uh, had him born from uh, essentially um, needed them to be somewhere else. Basically, I don't know how, to, how else to put it. I don't know if you put it very well. I don't know what you just said. Him born from, uh, essentially. What? I uh, had him born from. Uh, okay, sure. <clears throat> this happened, and and I found out that he was actually born on the day that my partner died. Oh. And, she, and when I went there, the, it's kismet, honestly. Um, the lady passed me a, a baby, a little puppy, and I saw I I held this puppy and I it just didn't feel right, you know. And I saw Russ um, on the floor, stumbling about, you know, trying to eat his his little weight fix, um, and just ever since he's been. My family. Yeah, that's it. I want to throw up. And, you know, that's that's very touching. Oh, and yeah. Touching. I can honestly say the same thing, Ellie. When, when Loki come into my life, I had no idea that we would end up as partners. Especially when he was a puppy. To be honest, and to put it in quite frank terms, there were times he was a in my ass I wasn't sure we would get that close because high energy you know German Shepherd extremely high energy as a puppy he was the biggest male of the litter too so confident and you know but now there's there's no way I could I could live without him yeah and I think and one thing boy do I ever have a good fucking song to end this stream on Jesus Christ so I just want to mention one thing quickly sure I kind of one thing that I really kind of don't like about the kind of language that a lot of antis use um, and really just people in general is and I know yeah people in general that is a better way of describing anti zoo fuckers yeah you could say antis. You could, you could also say anti-murder people. People who are against murder generally. Yeah. Like I'm some kind of fucking asshole feminist or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that makes What? What's happening? Are we getting some... Are we triggering the libs? Owning the libs? About the kind of language that a lot of antis use. Um, and really just people in general. Is and I know it sounds pedantic, like I'm some kind of fucking asshole feminist or whatever. <laughs> that makes some um, two of us. <laughs> but I mean, like when people use words like pet or you know things like um, your dog, you know, it's very um, it's very pejorative, and it sort of it diminishes is. their value as an individual. You know, Russ does not belong to me. Um, Russ belongs to Russ, oh, yeah. and I enable that, and sure. I give him the the chance to express his own autonomy. So that guys, he- the wording is off. That's the problem. See, our minds have been fucked with by our perception of the wording. We use the term pet, and it makes it seem as if this is a dog that's owned by a person. But if we change up the wording a little bit, you can see it's clearly just a an animal that's owned by a person he doesn't for the purposes of companionship. Very different, obviously. Need to belong to anyone. You know, in the same I way that you the same way that you, the listener, shouldn't have to belong to anyone in particular, unless you want to. But yeah, sorry, what, what were you gonna say, Astro? Sorry, when you said that it just brings me back to uh the breakfast at Tiffany's line where she's like, People don't belong to people. 
you know? <laughs> and that- yeah, but dogs aren't people, fucking genius. So yeah, that's a uh, bit of a bit of a difference there. I okay. Um, I think that's about it for the Zoophile podcast. There's clearly more episodes. In fact, there's two more episodes here. Maybe at some point I might get into those. Maybe we'll do a part two of this. For now, at the very least, I think we're going to uh, we're going to end it here. But like I said, we are going to have a little bit of a reprieve before the end of the stream. I'm not just going to drag you through all of this fucking garbage and just uh, just expect you to just, you know, leave on on a sour, grim note like that. So. Should we do K? Is that too obvious? We always do K. Is there someone else that we can do that's like wholesomely ridiculous? I don't know. I'd like to do something different that's... Everybody's saying K. Okay, everybody is saying K. We're just gonna do K. Because K is... K is safe. So... You know... You know what you're getting from K's cooking. And you... Nearly a chicken picnic. Guys, she almost did it. This is gonna be a good one. Hi, people. And I'm back cooking again. And today I'm going to be doing my version of a chicken picnic. Now this, uh, well. What the fuck is a chicken picnic? Is that a thing? Should I know what that is? Chicken picnic. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm doing my twist to it. So I'm doing one in, in curry, and I'm going to do the other one in some Barbecue sauce. Can you see that? Yeah. Shift your phone. Yo! Yo, Lee's back! We got fucking Lee for the taste test, guys. If you haven't seen the last few times that we've looked at K videos, she doesn't really talk she doesn't really have Lee do the taste tests that often anymore. A lot of the new videos, she's taste testing the vi- the, the food herself. And that's fucking blasphemy. Lee needs to be there to give it a big old thumbs up or else it's fucking wrong. So this is going to be a good one. By the way, this food does look a little better than average for Kay. It looks like a fucking curry. It looks fine so far. I'm sure she'll ruin it in some way, but like so far it just looks like curry chicken. She is improving over time. That. Shift your phone. Yes, it says... BBQ, which stands for barbecue if you don't understand. If you don't understand, guys, BBQ stands for barbecue. I know that might be a little bit of an advanced uh, culinary term. You might not be aware of that one, but I just thought that I would let you know. Just because, yeah. Right, I put, um, I don't know if you can see, but I put the chicken wing in the, uh, the, the uh, pan. And I'm just, I think this is a bit too big. I'll get another spoon and mix it properly. You might want a bit more sauce on it. I'm not keen on this myself. But. Uh, someone in chat says that Kay has shifted from a terrible cook into a mediocre cook. And that's... That's not wrong. She is, if you watch most of her stuff now, it's mostly at least competent. We don't get like a K fried rice situation. We don't get a Big Mac my way anymore. We're getting, I mean, you know, barbecue sauce and chicken is simple, but it's effective. It's a good taste. It goes well together. You don't need too much more than that. It'll taste good. Uh, You know, again, it's just like, it's, Somehow she's making things now that at least look like they have flavor and are cooked. And that's all you need, really. That's the biggest character development you, 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 could, you could ask for. That being said... That being said, I'm not sure why this bird, I'm not sure why this chicken looks like the leftover carcass of a turkey, uh, but I guess that's just the quality British meat that they're used to. Ryan, turn it over. Give it a good mix around in the barbecue sauce. 
and that. So now over to the uh, curry, which is yeah. bubbling very much so. So I think it's time now to turn them both out onto the plate. Now I'm taking the one out with the curry on. Wait, I don't understand. Why do you have curry chicken and also a different kind of chicken? Is this just multiple different flavors of chicken? I guess this is called chicken picnic, so that's not necessarily one type of chicken. Look at how good this recipe is, guys. She's making multiple types of chicken for us. Been all, all over the plate. And the second one... And I've got some different skewers. Oops, a daisy. It looks guys. like it. Guys. Different skewers. She even got different tongs for the chicken. Because, like, you would cross contaminate the sauce or whatever. You would fuck up the sauce. That's actually smart. Kay is learning over the course of time. This is a success story. Oops, a daisy. It looks like it's falling apart. You know what that means? It's overdone. So that is my version of a chicken picnic. So apparently a chicken picnic is just two slightly different flavors of, of chicken and nothing else. All right. Well, I mean, I didn't know what a chick chicken picnic was before I watched this video. So I guess I have nothing to compare it to. So good job, Kay. Let's see the taste test. This is the end product. And now it's the taste test. And here's the taste test. Yo, it's Lee! He's so happy to be here! Yeah, I love how he comes in. Oh, the... it's the taste test. The first frame, it's like, he's back! Oh, man. This is like a, this is like a, be, a be, uh, this is like a best of the worst episode that features Jack Packard. It's like, it's rare nowadays, but it's, it's like, it's, it's like old times. Well, what's up? What's up, Lee? Is it, is it nice? Is it going to be nice? And here's the taste test. Yeah, guys, I'm back. Yay! Welcome back! It's only you cheering, so don't bother. It's only her cheering, but we're cheering too, even though Lee is, uh... Well, see, we were a little bit mad at Lee earlier in the year because when the corona stuff started happening, it seemed like Lee had no... He didn't take it seriously or whatever, and his mom, Kay's clearly got some issues. You know, she's mentioned having, like, chest infections and stuff before. She's got breathing problems. By the way, this is a good freeze frame, but, uh, but yeah, we were a little mad at Lee because it seemed like he wasn't really taking it as seriously as he probably should, given, you know, the uh, vulnerable people that live in his household, but... I don't know, maybe at this point he's changed, maybe he's learned his lesson, maybe he's not just walking into fucking, like, department stores in the middle of a pandemic, completely unprotected. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we can like Lee again, but he's back. He's back for the taste test. Mm, I love that sauce. I love barbecue sauce. Love it. Guys, you know this is probably one of the nicest meals that, that Lee has ever had. Because you know, he grew up mostly probably with his mom cooking him just the worst food. And now, and now he's able to eat something that's like a cooked chicken piece with flavor. Kay's old videos, she would have just baked the chicken and like covered it in lard and called it a fucking day. Now there's flavor. It this is this is frankly unheard of. Gorgeous. Weird combination. Gorgeous. But. Not even not even nice. It's not even nice anymore. It's gorgeous. This is a this is this is K two. This is the sequel to K. She's finally improved. It's this is amazing. Yeah. Mmm. Not too spicy. But good in a wrap of spice. Hold up. Now, again, again, there's gonna be the downers in chat who are like, oh, bro, but she just used barbecue sauce and like a curry sauce from the store. It's like, I know. It's not like she's making this shit herself, but it's better than she was. And you know, that's 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 a nice thing. Good job, Kay. You have improved. We 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 
We stand 1K, and potentially a Lee, too, if the day is right. As you know, it's... Oh, what am I doing with uh, As you know, it's great to see Lee come back. Um, so, no if you like... That. Pardon? No one thinks that. Uh, well, I don't care what, what other people think. Um, right, if you like what you see... She is a fucking gangster. She doesn't give a shit what you people think. She doesn't care if you people fucking appreciate her her cooking she just does it for herself okay that is fucking badass i like that now i'm gonna see if i get this right um because i haven't done this for a while um well i mean i always get it wrong if you like what you see please keep viewing me if you want to give me a thumbs up please do if you ever said it wrong again no, Pete, please. It's been like five years, Kay. God damn it, I believed in you. Please feel free. Yes, yeah, if you want to give me a thumbs up, please feel free. It's a good thing you get that exact cadence and wording down, because otherwise it would be null and void. By the way, nice uh, Iron Maiden killer shirt. If you want to leave me a comment, please do, the more the merrier. And if you haven't subscribed, or you know someone who hasn't subscribed, get them subscribed and get everybody subscribed and even get your dog subscribed. Get yeah, your dog subscribing. Uh, that's not. It's not as as funny as it might have been if we didn't uh, do the rest of the stream.